اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ نحمده و نستعین و نؤمن به و نتوکل علی و نعود به تعالی من شرور انفسنا و سیئات عامالنا نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله قال الله الحكيم في محكم كتابه الكريم وهو أستق الصادقين وقوله الحق بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبَ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَحَوَ حَسْبُ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغَ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا اللہم اغفر للمؤمنین والمؤمنات والمسلمین والمسلمات الاحیاء منهم والاموات تابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير Respected elders, sisters and brothers in Islam I advise myself, I remind you all about piety about taqwa ilahi I ask myself and request you all to have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at tawakkul ala Allah. I ask myself and request you all to remove hypocrisy and show off from our day to day life. If you remember for the last two continuous days, continuous weeks, we are talking about the importance and significance of masjid, and congregational prayer. And today, from this Friday first sermon, I am going to talk about the importance and significance of Friday prayer, Salatul Jum'ah. Hadith says that Salatul Jum'ah and Salatul Aidain rights of Imam Masum alayhi salatu wassalam. It's not our rights. It's not our position. Mim manasibina al Jum'atu wal Aidain. Imam alayhi salatu wassalam says one of our rights, one of our Positions is Jum'ah and Idain. It's Imam who is going to lead the Jum'ah prayer and Idain prayer. Are the representative appointed by him? And Salatul Jama'ah, the daily congregational prayer, Imam says, is the right and rights of our Shia our followers. Because Imam alayhi salatu was salam is in ghaibah, he is in occultation, so we are allowed to lead the Friday prayer and Eid prayer. Okay. And you see the benefits, why the enemies are scared of our gathering. You know, sometimes in some areas, they disturb they put obstacles, hurdles. Why? Because the gathering carries the message. The educational benefits, the social benefits, etc. This Salatul Jama'ah, this Salatul Jum'ah has. When we sit side by side, it gives what? It gives the meaning of unity. Of course, we need to be united practically. 
And the message is very important. How the Imam of the, the speaker of the Friday prayer delivers the message. Because in some masajid, if you go, you see the khutbah, the speakers, they deliver the old speeches. They just narrate. There is nothing new for the youth, nothing new for the people. Everything is written and outdated. Okay. I remember one of my teachers, his name is Ustad Sheikh Mohsin Qirati. He's a very well-known person. He comes on television in Iran for the last 40 years. Very good speaker. He says, I was invited in Africa. I don't remember the name of the city or a country. Long time ago. And there was a conference about importance of the masjid and religious places, etc. Many speakers were invited, and I was among those. The speaker coming, giving lecture, and the time was over. And I had no time to give lecture. Maximum two minutes were left. I said, okay, fine, no problem. Two minutes, these few minutes are much enough to give the message. He says, there was a big picture of Masjid al-Nabawi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I just looked at the masjid, the picture, the image of the masjid, and Addressing to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I told Ya Rasulullah, there was a time we had only one masjid, this Masjid al Nabi, and people were merging in Islam, surrendering to Islam, submitting to Islam. The enemies, the tyrants, the cruel people, they were scared. And they had no power to, to destroy Islam. And it one masjid was much enough, so much strong. Today, we are having millions of masjid, and nobody is scared for a mass. And no one is ready to confront the tyrant and cruel people. Why? That masjid, the message was going to the people. The message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the message of Imam of the masjid, Imam of the Salatul Jum'ah is very important. Please recite Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, what I would like to tell you from the last ayat of Surah Al Jum'ah. Quran says, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهَوَنٍ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ رَازِقِينَ O Muhammad wa Rasulullah, when they saw merchandise, you know, transaction, business, or diversion, amusement, sports, they rushed to it, they rushed towards it. Beating drum, when they saw beating drum, they rushed towards it. And left you standing. وَإِذَا رَأُوا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوَنٍ فَضُّوا إِلَيْكَهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ Say whatever is 
before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than the amusement, entertainment, and the trade. Wallahu khairu raziqeen. Once our Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving lecture, giving sermon in Friday prayer. It was Friday prayer. People were there. They were listening. They heard a caravan coming from Syria to Medina, beating drum, informing the people, the caravan is here, the trade is here, we have the goods. People had shortage of the goods. They ran. They ran towards that caravan and left Prophet standing. Eight people were there, only eight, or 12. In some tradition they say, when only eight people remain listening to the speech of Prophet ﷺ, the khutbah of Prophet ﷺ. They were Amir al-Mumini alayhi salatu was salam, Fatima Zahra salamu alayha, Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba alayhi salatu was salam, Imam Hussain alayhi salatu was salam, Abu Dhar, Rizwanullah ta'ala alayhi, Salman, Rizwanullah ta'ala alayhi, Mirdat, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi, and Suhaib. They had no trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not wait for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. They rushed. They left Prophet standing. Quran never said they left the Salah. No. Quran never said they left the Salatul Jum'ah. No. Quran says they left Prophet standing. They insulted Prophet They did not listen to Prophet Wallahu khairu raziqeen. The Mufassirin, they say, my Ustad Sheikh Mohsin Qirati, he says, Wallahu khairu raziqeen means here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed the risk of the worshippers of the Salatul Jum'ah. Our risk, our provision has been guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you attend the Friday prayer. Quran never say tijarat is wrong. Huh? Quran says, awal zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then go for tijarat. Stay calm. Listen to the, you know, Friday prayer. It has two sermons and two rakats. These two sermons like equal to the two rakats. That's why istima'ul khutba wajibun. Listening to the sermons is obligatory. If you are inside the masjid, the speaker is delivering the khutbah, the two sermons. It's obligatory upon each and every worshiper to be calm and be silent and listen. Nobody has right to disturb. You see, example, I give you an example. Nowadays, for those who are the lovers of the cricket, the World Cup is going on. The, the Kenyan timing, the, the World Cup starts exactly at 12.30 p.m. Two minutes before the Zuhur namaz starts or the Friday namaz starts, just two minutes. Okay. Some of you are supporting your teams, fine, no problem. I have no problem with that. Okay. When you come, just turn off the cell phone. If you want to check, check after the Salatul Jumu'ah. During the sermons, no. This is testing time. You know the Friday is last day of the week. And Zuhur Namah, this 12 o'clock, 12 and after, is peak hour. Okay? This is the testing time. Whether you come for Salatul Jumu'ah, are you stay at home or stay at the office or job? It's testing time. Quran never says tijarat is wrong. Quran says whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has better than the tijarat, trading, 
and amusement. Wallahu khairu razaqeen. And Allah is the best provider. Subhanallah. Wa ma tawfiqu illa billah alayhi tawakkal tu ilayhi unib. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Nasrun min allahi wa fatuhun qareeb. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ida jaa'a nasrullah wa al-fatih wa ra'ita al-nas yadkhuluna fi deen illahi afwaja. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَا تَوَّابًا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بار الخلائق أجمعين اللهم مولانا صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الذين قلت في شأنهم وفي حقهم إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم رجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا لا لا سيما على ابن عمه ووسيه ووارث علمه أمير المؤمنين مولانا علي بن أبي طالب اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى بنته وبضعته فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى سبت يا رحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى أئمة المسلمين وهداة المهديين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي الباقر وجعفر بن محمد الصادق وموسى بن جعفر الكاظم وعلي بن موسى الرضا المرتضى ومحمد بن علي التقي الجواد وعلي بن محمد النقي الهادي والحسن بن علي الزكي العسكري اللهم صل على حجة ابن الحسن صاحب الزمان المهدي المنتظر القائم بالحق أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وأرواحنا لتراب مقدمه الفداء أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله Respected elders, sisters and brothers in Islam Tonight we are commemorating the shahadat of our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Inshallah, I am going to talk about the legacy of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam tonight. But with this limited time, I would like to just bring your attention about the legacy of Imam Jafar Sadiq that we are all, you know, Jafari. We are known as Jafari. And our fiqh is known as fiqh Jafar, Imam Jafar Sadiq. Although it's brought by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's a fiqh Muhammadi, fiqh Alavi, fiqh Hassani, fiqh Husaini, fiqh Baqiri. But because of the time he had, he got, the golden period he had. So he did able to spread the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt Athar Salam to his students and throughout the world. At once he had 4,000 students from all schools of thoughts. 
non-Muslims were also invited. They were allowed to come and have direct talk and debate with Imam Jafar Sadiq He never showed anger to anyone. His school, his university was open to all. All the four Imams of our Sunni brothers, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Directly or indirectly, they are students and influenced by Imam Jafar Sadiq And all the scholars for the last 1,000 years, even more, they talk and praise about Imam Jafar Sadiq No one denied about the personality, the immense knowledge Imam Jafar Sadiq had. Alhamdulillah. And if you go to Egypt, the University of Cairo, the Fiqh al-Jafari is accepted. Now, especially after the last 40 years of the Islamic Revolution in Iran, our Muslim brothers, even they, they, they didn't know the books we have, the, the expertise we have, now they are started realizing and coming from all over the world. At this time, I'm telling you, from more than 100 countries, the students are studying in Qom. From more than 100 countries. Thousands of students from Africa, Asia, you know, Europe, North America, South America, from Far East countries, they are in Qom. Alhamdulillah, now, because of the fiqh of Imam Jafar Sadiq wasalam, and because of the knowledge given by Imam Jafar Sadiq wasalam, although, you know, Imam Jafar Sadiq wasalam, was also under pressure, political pressure. The, revolution, the revolutionaries, they were taking stand. At his time, many, many Sadat, ulama were killed and martyred. But in the meantime, he allowed all school of thoughts to come and study from him. Even atheists were there. Hindus at that time, imagine, 1,000 years ago, Hindus. And they were attending and having dialogue in their, with their, in their languages. And Imam wasalam, used to convince them. And whoever goes and comes back with satisfaction. With this limited time, I would like to tell you one beautiful story. You know, Imam Sadiq wasalam, was summoned by Mansur Dawaniqi. Mansur Dawaniqi and Mutawakkil were two cruel, the most cruel and terrible rulers of Bani Abbas. While Imam Jafar Sadiq wasalam, sitting close to him, a bee, you know, fly, comes to Mansur Dawaniqi and bothering him. He tries to send it back and throw and kill, but he failed to do so. You know, here, the mosquitoes, they bother us sometimes. We try with our two hands to kill the mosquitoes. We don't do. Sometimes we fail, sometimes we pass. So the bee was bothering him. The Mansur Dawaniqi says, Ibn Rasulillah, I don't understand why did Allah create this bee, 
this fly, this makhi, you know. Right away, Imam Jafar Sadiq answering, targeting him without mentioning his name. Imam Sadiq says, you know, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create this bee? Just to prove, just to demonstrate that the tyrant people, the cruel people, the zalimin are unable to fight with this bee and fly. They are weaker than this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power it's so much so that the tyrant people, the zalimin, sometimes they give up and they were not able to, to kill the bee. What I would like to tell you is, sometimes we hear, or you watch TV, when the Mansur Dawaniqis of the time, the Firaons of the time, the Namruts of the time, the Zalimin of the time, they threaten, they warn, they put us under pressure. Sometimes psychological war is taking place. They bother us, they keep us confused. Just I would like to tell you, they are very, very weak, weaker than the bee and the mosquito. Their power is weaker than the web of spider. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who are worshipping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Their power is weaker than the web of the spider. It's the time when you see the truth is being spread all over the world. People are now getting aware of the conditions. The zalimin, they put the people confused that they should not understand what's going on, what is behind the picture. But Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, day by day, we are receiving the news from all over the world. The nations are coming up, they're taking a stand against the tyrant people, the oppressors, the cruel people, and one day, you will see and we will see the whole world comes under the leadership of the family of Ahlul Bayt Athar That is the time when the angel will say, Ja al haqqo wa zahaq al batilu inna al batila kana zahuqa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfill our desires. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our duas. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal the patient mu'mineen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to practice the truth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support who supports Muslimin and orphans and widows, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help those who are helping Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the calamities from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pay off the credits and loans of all the needy people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala release the innocent prisons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our marhumin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the sihat and health to all of us and all the mu'mineen, mu'mineen of the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten in reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wa salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include us among the followers and supporters of Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wa salam. Nasru minallahi wa fathun qareeb. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.
إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان طوابا صدق الله العلي العظيم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته